Your Minnesota Fighting Vikings got it done 33-26 over the New England Patriots, bouncing back from that alleged 40-3 uh, to beatdown by the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday. That seems like so long ago. Whatever. But uh, there was some press conference and media availability. Kevin O'Connell, Kirk Cousins, and others want to run through uh, some of them and uh, do a little reaction. Will Raggett, Sports Illustrated. First thing Kevin O'Connell mentioned in his postgame presser is how great the atmosphere was at U.S. Bank Stadium tonight. Also shouts out the late John Madden, who they honor tonight. Yeah, that stadium was rocking. Where I was a little bit worried, especially after what happened on Sunday. But, I mean, Vikings fans, they were loud and proud. Even when things were in the balance uh, during the middle of the game, like, they got loud. Third down for what? Uh, I think that certainly helped. Uh, Kevin O'Connell, uh, Kirk Cousins was phenomenal tonight. I can't say enough about the protection as well. The offensive line played one of the best games I've seen, uh, especially against one of the best pass horses in the NFL. Matt Judon had 13 sacks leading the NFL. He got zero. Goose egg, DeAndre Russell. He may have only had like one or two pressures as well. Kind of crazy. Uh, uh, Kevin O'Connell, we got to continue to improve and not need to have setbacks uh, to find out best. And he, he's right. Where Sunday was an absolute wake-up call. Hopefully that resonates throughout the rest of the season and they don't need another one. Uh, Raggets again. Kevin O'Connell uh, says he thinks Kirk Cousins had a fantastic short week of preparation and is really taking ownership of this offense. He absolutely is. I, I think that may have been one of the best games that we've seen Kirk Cousins play, minus the, the boneheaded interception. Uh, he was great in clutch situations. He was great just getting the ball to Jefferson and letting Jefferson do his thing. And also, you know, getting a touchdown to Hawkinson, getting a touchdown to Thielen, really scanning the field. And again, again against one of the best defenses and especially one of the best secondaries in the league, Kirk got it done. In prime time, by the way. Uh, Ekstrom, Kirk Cousins praising Justin Jefferson for his contested catches, not hearing footsteps, not getting alligator armed, and knowing he's going to get popped. Well, Kirk just throwing up hospital balls. Like, yeah, Je Jefferson's tough. Now, Jefferson pound for pound is the best player in the NFL. He, he really is. And he, you know, for being a six foot, you know, 190 pound receiver, he will take a pounding. Like He will certainly take a hit. And beyond the clean route running, beyond the catches, all that stuff, he's just a tough football player. And that's exactly uh, what uh, Justin Jefferson is. Uh, Raggets, Kirk Cousins, we're winning, so talking to you guys has been a lot easier this year, but I'm not playing any better. Uh, if anything, uh, but I'm not playing any better. Uh, if anything, I come here to try and force a smile because I'm thinking, gosh, I need to play better. And that's a great attitude to have where – you know, he's not thinking, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. And there's a lot of quarterbacks around this league who do do that, especially younger guys. But Kirk Cousins has been through the ringer, and he understands that like, he's only got so many seasons left, and this is a chance to be a special one. And the fact that he, even after his best game of the season, first game with three uh, passing touchdowns, it's like, I can do better. I mean, you just beat Belichick. And they could do better. Uh, uh, Kirk Cousins, I got to call my dentist back in Holland, Michigan, and ask for some custom grills. <laughs> so in, in the post game on NBC, he was talking about he needs a grill like Justin Jefferson. I think if the Vikings win the Super Bowl, Kirk has to uh, be in the Super Bowl parade with a grill and, and all the chains. Uh, but I, I think, um, uh, yeah, I think his wife is just going to be like, no, no, no. Plus, I, I don't see Kirk spending. I mean, grills aren't cheap. Uh, so I, I don't see him spending an absorbent amount of money on something that's kind of frivolous and ridiculous. Uh, Thomason, uh, Kirk Cousins said he took note of Kirk Go Chains Jr. and said that he was uh, he was tremendous and that the Vikings need to hire him as a team mascot. So there's a kid who got got a lot of uh, uh, press. He was on the jumbotron where he's at, he shirtless had the chains all, all that stuff and it, it was sort of like. You know, in Joe Montana, when right before he led a game winning drive in the Super Bowl against the Bengals, and he's like, Hey, it's John Candy. So I think that was Kirk Cousins' Hey, it's John Candy moment, where, I mean, the Vikings in a very close game against one of the best defenses in the league, he's just like, Hey, that kid's funny. <laughs> That's just great. Uh, Seifert, who's not Carl Gerbschmidt, uh, Justin Jefferson on breaking the NFL record for receiving yards his first three seasons of a career. It means a lot. It means that my course of reaching to the Hall of Fame is near. Uh, I'm just going to keep working, doing whatever it takes to make place for this team. I love this team. I'll do anything for it. Uh, when the ball is in the air, it's mine. Ask what's uh, left between now and the Hall of Fame winning the Super Bowl. And uh, I, I love Jefferson's attitude that he's already talking about the Hall of Fame in year three because – the man's got goals, and he wants to win. He, he because him critiquing the offense during the week when he had three for thirty-three on five targets against Dallas. It wasn't about him getting stats. It was about winning. It was about putting up points. Uh, where you put up three on Sunday, you put up thirty-three. Well, you put up twenty-six uh, on offense on on Thursday. 
and certainly a much better performance. Uh, Will Raggett's TJ Hawkinson on Justin Jefferson. You can look at him, and you can also lean on him a bit. It puts everyone else in a good situation, put some guys one-on-one. There's a couple of times where I was like, man, they're doubling me. I'm like, oh, never mind. JJ's right there. <laughs> where, yeah, Jefferson, uh, especially you saw on the Thielen touchdown where Thielen was singled up. He was getting doubled and tripled. Uh, Belichick was damn sure as like, hey, he's not going to beat us in the red zone. And that's the effect. And uh, receivers opposite of Jefferson have to love that, whether it's Thielen, whether it's Hawkinson, whether it's KJ, whether it's Rager, who, whoever. You're going to be singled up, and if you can beat your man, you're going to score. Uh, then uh, Andrew Kramer, Strib, uh, Sean Nunn Sullivan on the Vikings defense. We don't panic, and that's so cool to see at this point in the season because it's going to come into play in December and hopefully the playoffs. If we can win close games like this. It just builds confidence. Also, getting guys back healthy. Dantzler can return week 14 against the Lions. And then uh, you got 10 days off. Hopefully Evans gets back. Hopefully Booth gets back. Hopefully Diesel Dalvin Thompson gets back. Offensively, hopefully Derisaw gets back. So the Vikings have a chance to uh, get healthier. Where I mean, the defense... The defense, let's be honest, got smacked around f- through three quarters, but they buckled down in the fourth quarter, forced two three and outs, and then stopped the Patriots, uh, held them out of the end zone on the final drive before the end of the game. Uh, Sullivan on Duke Shelley, the sixth corner to start for the Vikings this season. He wasn't nervous. He was telling coaches all week, I'm your guy. So he did exactly what I thought he'd do. I'm proud of him. And Shelley, respect. I mean, Devontae Parker had a couple of big catches over him, but that's whatever. Devontae Parker, 6'3", 6'4", Duke Shelley's 5'8". But uh, another... Uh, end zone pass breakup. Shelly against that jump ball, I think it was uh, born. Uh, and just like he did against Buffalo with Dawson Knox. And Shelly, I mean, I love his attitude. Love his spiciness on the outside. I think the Vikings had themselves a player uh, in the former Crooked Chicago Bear. Lastly, Raggett's Cameron Bynum after the game. Quickly becoming one of my favorite Vikings. Last week was a bad week for us. We moved on four days, got that taste out of our mouth. Now we got to keep it up. Josh Metellus a few feet away. Last week, I don't even remember that. Cameron Bynum, what game last week? Who did we play last week? And that's the attitude they got to have, where, especially on that short week, got, got to put that out of your mind, got to come in and kick some ass, and that's exactly what they did. So really proud of this team. And now hopefully they, they keep it rolling on. We're on to the Jets, the goddamn Jets. Good times, man. But uh, that's it. Reaction to the post-game, uh, post-win pressers uh, le- and media availability. Let us know your thoughts, our thoughts, and their thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once worth the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.